It's true, Paper Mile is coming. It's coming very soon and it's gonna hit every single motorist in the UK eventually. And eventually, you can pretty much forget about your freedom to drive and to an extent, I think your freedom to own a car. Now this video is particularly aimed at all of those thus far smug people who whenever we've spoken about you Liz have been like, well, it's not gonna impact me because I have a compliant car, I have an EV, or maybe I've got a really old classic car that it doesn't apply to. Well, you know what? The reality is that as we've been saying for a while now, ULES has been a precursor to what's coming behind it and what's coming behind it is pay per mile. This is no longer a rumor. This is no longer a conspiracy theory. This is real. It's coming and I'm going to tell you all about it in this video. A brown car. So just sticking with ULEZ for a minute, the whole debate around ULEZ just gets even sillier and sillier as time progresses, quite frankly. And as we actually get closer and closer to the deadline, which is looming very, very fast now. And for example, recently somebody sent me a link to a news item about Brent. Brent is here where I live, actually. And apparently the Conservative councillors had decided to ask for a debate in the Brent Town Hall Civic Centre, whatever you want to call it, um, regarding ULEZ. And they had titled this thing, Punishing Brent's Drivers. And the Labour Council had gone, okay, sure, we'll have that debate. Only the thing is, they changed the parameters of this thing until they basically changed the title to Punishing Brent's Children. I mean, hang on a minute. And then what happened, of course, is the Conservative Council just refused to have the debate. They walked out. Part of me is like, well, they should have stayed and had that debate because it was an opportunity to do so. But the other part of me really actually can't blame them because that's just completely changing the parameters totally. And you know, the whole concept has been turned around. That is absolutely ridiculous. Now, the reality is that it's not about punishing actually Brent's children. In fact, it's not even about punishing Brent's drivers. But the ex the extremities of the number of people, the whole spectrum of people, and the whole spectrum of society that actually punishes is vast. And it's, it's, the consequences just haven't been thought through. And if you've had a chance to look at any of my sort of protest coverage videos that I've done, where I've gone out and talked to real people, you know, anything from a charity that uses their four by fours to go out and rescue people in need when the weather conditions are really bad, to a guy that had to sell part of his cherished uh, BMX bike collection, in order to buy a new van, in order to do what he does, and what he does actually tends to people's graves. I mean, that's extraordinary. And on top of that, you know, it's, it's quite clear, it's been in the news that this ULIS expansion is going to hurt charities, it's going to hurt schools, and um, it's going to hit food banks. There's another thing that is coming into it as well. But still, people ignore it, and they ignore it because they think it doesn't affect them. And we've said time and time again that it will affect you, if not directly, indirectly will affect you, because tradespeople will pass on the cost, delivery people will pass on the cost, um, people that transport you will pass on the cost, but businesses will also shut, businesses will close, businesses are struggling, you know, and, and people just won't be able to do and provide the services and products that you normally need, but even if you think you have a compliant car, therefore, it is going to affect you. What's been widely reported now, that's recently, especially in the last few days, it's been coming out a lot. And again, it's, as I said earlier, it alludes to or basically uh, uh, confirms what we've been saying for a while now, that ULEZ is a precursor to pay per mile. Now MPs are openly talking about it and there's even a date. And the date is 2026. This is likely when this is going to come in. And even Khan has said this. You know, Khan has openly said this. In fact, they even advertise a role for the position of somebody to lead that program. I'm not even joking. This is real. This was out there. Anybody could have replied. You could have replied. I think I covered that in the previous video as well. And somebody else covered it. I think Jeff Buys Cars also covered that as well. So this is a real thing. This is not about was well, certainly not about the environment let's be absolutely honest because people confuse these matters and they go oh, well you know we need to do this because of the environment it's not to do with the environment it's to do with the air quality it is to do with the pollution but we've long since established that the expansion the ULIS expansion itself is not to do with pollution either because as i've shown with my little meter that i've gone around and created these two videos which many of you have seen and appreciated and thank you very much um about the fact that there's going to be no difference to the uh pollution levels or the air quality quality 
in areas like where I'm sitting right now. It's a beautiful day right now. But this also is confirmed by, in fact, TFL's own independent report, which they commissioned way, way back, right at the beginning by Jacobs. And they said the impact would be negligible and would be negative socioeconomically in certain areas. So, and that's particularly referring to deprived areas where this is going to hit hardest. But the reality is that it's it's they're not even hiding this anymore this has come out to be a fact now even tfl has admitted that ulez is about making money and and how have they been okay they wouldn't directly say that but how have they admitted that because they've said that they this has recently been quoted they've said there's no plan b if ulez doesn't go ahead on august the 29th there's no plan b that they have in order to fill that gaping uh, gap that they've got in their budget which you know is, be is because of incompetence of, of uh government in london area or basically the mayorship in london area um and this is what ulez has always been about it's been about making money now the reality of it is that even if you does come in they've already done their sums and of course because we talked about the fact that you know they claim it only affects one in ten the reality is it affects a lot more people but ultimately as we've seen in central and inner london people will be making that transition people are moving naturally to newer cleaner more compliant cars in some cases they're moving to evs so there is this natural transition that happens anyway and i'm not against that that's actually how it should be people shouldn't be forced they should be allowed to do these things naturally and in fact we're moving towards cleaner but i mean the air is cleaner we've discussed that in other videos it's the cleanest it's ever been but one thing that they've realized because of all of this is that even if they do introduce the ULEZ after a couple of years they won't be making any money on it and don't forget that initially the plan is to make money on fines that's the reality of it because that's where they make the big money and most people in the first six months to one year a lot of people are going to get fined especially with this ULEZ expansion because it's so confusing it's so wishy-washy you know whereas the central London one people knew where is central London and then you had the north and south circular that was very conveniently ring-roaded by the north and south circular road so you know anybody knows that don't turn into london as long as you don't turn into london you're fine the moment you do you know you're going to be hit but this new expansion it covers so many different it's not exactly encircled by the m25 it is encircled by it but there are parts of it where it doesn't go up to the m25 and some parts it does go up to the m25 there are dog legs there are gaps there are little kinks there's so many areas of confusion it's going to catch so many people out so they're banking on the fact that they're going to make a ton of money through the fines but they know that obviously once you get fined twice you get fined you know third time you're not going to get fined you're going to go all right i'm not going there i'm just going to stop going there i'm going to find another way of there whatever you're not going to get fined so they know that that is going to go down they know the revenue is going to down because people are going to uh, switch to compliant cars or evs or whatever so they know that basically after a couple of years they're not going to make any money so these cameras that they've been putting up all over the place and interestingly if you've noticed they haven't been putting these cameras just on the border because normally you put them, you know, it would make sense, right? That where you enter a ULA zone is where the camera should be, right? So that it clicks on you as you go into the ULA zone. So it got you. So it's like, all right, you've gone into the ULA zone. I've got you. That's what the camera should be for. But as you've noticed, these cameras are going up everywhere. So they're going up within the ULA zone, within the expanded ULA zone. And what are these cameras? The ANPR cameras. And what we've been saying for a while... And what is now being proved to be true is that the idea with these cameras is to turn the whole thing into a smart road network where basically it's not about you're going into a zone it's about basically monitoring you the whole of your journey so it basically it says from when you start to where you end up it's recording your number plate it's recording where you're going what time you're going how far you're going it's recording your journey uh, and so the reality is that these cameras are in place to create you know paper mile charging this is this is why you know the reality is that as I've, as i keep saying that if thus far you've been like oh you know i have a newer car i'm compliant i've got an ev or whatever i'm not going to be impacted by it. well you are because this cost will because it's not just going to obviously <laughs> here's the thing this will apply to all cars um because it's about making money and it's not about you know uh you know in fact the interesting thing is that with the paper mile it's going to apply to all cars but here's the where here's the real kicker is that especially for poorer people that are going to be driving older cars considered to be more polluting cars they're actually going to be hit with higher charges so this is not even going to be one charge it's going to be a, a you know a, a scale of a bit like the uh, emissions based parking systems at the moment it's going to be a scaled uh, rate of charges that you're going to be hit with so if you've got on a polluting car you're going to be hit harder but anyway but everybody is going to be hit by it and the reality is that those people are like oh i've got an ev i'm going to you are the evs are going to be hit by this as well and in fact it's partly because of the evs that this is happening 
right? Stick with me on this. You go, what? What is he talking about? No, it's because of the EVs this is happening. It's crazy, but it's, the, it's logical. If you think about it, they're forcing people to switch A to compliant cars, but they want them to switch to uh, EVs, very expensive EVs. So they're forcing people to spend a lot of money to switch to EVs, which uh, mostly are still very, very expensive to buy, right? But the problem with that is the EVs don't have any road tax at the moment. They don't have any VED. That's coming in 2025, but it won't be enough. So they're like, okay, the problem that we now have is that all these people will switch to these cars and we won't be able to make any money off them. So how do we make money off them? Well, we charge them pay per mile. And this is particularly the case with EVs. So because especially with those rolling charges of like, you know, if it's more polluting, they won't be able to apply that to EVs. So what they'll be able to do is just go pay per mile and that's how they're going to work that out. So the reality is that you know Sadiq Khan wants to introduce a pay per mile smart road charging network system he's basing this concept on Singapore where they already do have such a system now London is not Singapore okay I think this you know this this has to be made very very clear London is 600 square miles Singapore right you have six million people scrammed into an area of 280 square miles right it's about half or less than half the area right it's an island it's crammed it's packed it's congested it's dense it makes sense to have a paper mile system that i'm not saying i'm not advocating paper mile but i, I can i can see how that could work especially when most people there can't even afford cars what do I mean by I can't even afford cars? An average Toyota Corolla there, right? Which you say, well, that would be an, an ordinary car for most people to aspire to own, right? An average Toyota Corolla there costs about $140,000. I'm not even joking. That's how expensive cars are over there. In fact, it's the most expensive city in the world to own a car. And, you know, so Singapore is not london you cannot compare those two you can't just take a system that works or maybe works in one place and just you know blindly apply it to our great city it doesn't work and regarding our great city regarding london regarding all those again going back to the smug people say oh this is a london problem it doesn't apply to all of us what happens in london it will roll out everywhere else we've already seen low emission zones rolling out in many of the other cities um low emission zones or what's the cas one uh clean air zones and then the ulet thing will also start to happen as well um but ppm will paper mile will spread across the rest of the country and why will it happen because again going back to the whole ev thing and again this is why i'm saying this is all because of evs they're looking at a 13 billion pound hole in tax revenue from people not buying fuel when they switch to evs so here's this is crazy right it's just it's a whole diesel thing repeating right they told us to buy diesel and they told us diesel is bad for us they told us to buy evs and then said oh well now we're not making any money so now you will have to pay because you bought diesels and so because you bought evs and you're like, but well, hang on, but you told us to buy EVs. Yeah, we told you to buy EVs, but now you bought them. Now we can't make any money off the fuel. So now we're going to find another way to charge you. And it will be pay per mile. And that's the, way it will, that's the way it will come in. And the thing is, like, it may start innocently enough, right? They may come along with, say, like 10 pence a mile. And the 10 pence a mile, most people, you know, a lot of you will be like, oh, 10 pence a mile, that's all right. It doesn't sound like much. 10 pence a mile, that's all right. Work it out, people. The average mileage in the UK for most motorists is 10,000 miles per year. At 10 pence a mile, you're looking at 1,000 pounds a year. If, if you, when, and of course, you know that that 10 pence isn't going to stay at 10 pence. That's going to creep up. You know, and eventually, it's very likely you, you're going to hit something like a pound a mile. A pound a mile at an average mileage of 10,000 miles a year. 10,000 pounds a year. Are you willing to pay 10,000 pounds, um, 10, pounds a year? And the reality is, as some people have said to me, is that, well, if paper mile happens, would that be in place of road tax and... Uh, uh, well, it's not actually called road tax now. It's called vehicle excise duty, so VED. But, and I'm like, well, no, it won't be in place of that because initially this will be contained to London, right? So if it's contained to one city, they can't abolish road tax because road tax is a national thing, right? If I drive this car in London, um, I, they may say, okay, you don't have to pay road tax, but actually I could drive this anywhere. I could just go out, you know, 20 minutes from me, I'm on the M1 and I could go anywhere. Right, so they're not going to abolish the road tax, at least not initially. But of course, like I said, paper mile will, and eventually, if it works in London, it'll be rolled out to the rest of the country once they put up enough cameras. And at that point, they might consider that. But in the meantime, in the interim period, however long that takes, so maybe one, two, three years, whatever, you'll be paying both road tax, as we know it, and paper mile. That's inevitable. That's how it's going to work. So, you know, you really have to think, you'll have to think very, very carefully about 
your ability, your need, your requirement to use and own a car. You'll have to think about how, well, how badly do you need your car? Do you, whether you need it for leisure, whether you need it for work, whether you need it for family, whether you need it as a hobby, whether it is your hobby, you know, maybe, or maybe you're just in the remotest part of the country, you know, like I've had people commenting on my YouTube channel, um, all the way from some remote part of Scotland, they say, well, we don't have any choice. I mean, we, we don't even have cables thick enough to actually supply us with the electricity required to charge an EV. We've been told that and the nearest EV charging point is 40 miles away so it's, you know, it's actually simply not feasible for them to switch to an EV but the reality is that you got to think about you know a lot of people that will need their cars not even in the remote areas but people that live in the London area for work for whatever purpose it is like a lot of the people that we've talked to in those protest videos that I referred to earlier go check them out some heart-wrenching stories in those videos but people need cars they need independent transport and very soon you will be severely restricted in how you can use that and ultimately how you can own um, that independent transport um, you know because ultimately you know when it gets to that level when you know the, the value of using a car is so expensive and the values of buying the cars will also become more expensive because as less and less people buy cars the fewer the cars get the more the more the profit margins have to grow on the less it's like executive cars right the way the cars are structured the cheaper the smaller cars are cheaper they sell more of them so the profit margins are lower then you get up to luxury cars and executive cars and sports cars they sell fewer of those cars so the profit margins have to be much higher on them so when you sell fewer things you put profit margins higher in order to make money but that's if you have a car industry because you know the other aspect of all of this is that whatever is left of the uk car industry can kiss its backside goodbye as well because the reality is there'll just be no need for it you know i mean as it is we don't really have any british car brands anymore i mean yes supposedly they're british but for example rolls royce and bentley are both german uh jaguar land rover is actually indian uh aston martin is actually owned by a combination of canada saudi arabia china and even germany because Daimler has a share in it as well and McLaren is owned by Bahrain and then say something even like Caterham but that's really too small to consider in this uh, discussion because it's more like a, a small in the boutique car manufacturer but if you like even that's owned by Malaysia so the reality is there isn't very much here and when things like this start to happen when it becomes so prohibitive for people to own and drive a car they're just these countries are going to right we'll just take these companies and take them elsewhere it's already happened with things like MG you know, MG's already gone, you know, and, and you know, companies like BMW can, have been building minis in other countries as well. So, you know, this is what happens, you know, and this is what's going to happen. So if you don't want to lose your cars, uh, your car industry, and your right, your freedom, your right to your freedom of movement, as you wish to do it in your personal car, then you need to take heed of what's going on. You need to act now. I mean, you must do something and you need to do it now whether you do it protest the next protest 22nd of july at the bbc center in central london i'm going to be there come down there so come to the protests make these you know there's lots of awareness protests happening all around london go and join those so protest petition go to parliament talk to your councillors talk to your mps tell them right now that this is a vote loser we have a situation where there's an opposition party that's very comfortable about the fact that they think that they are coming into government they may well do and then they think that they that will give them a mandate to impose ULEs and ULEs like scenarios such as paper mile on the entire uk you need to tell them right now that that is not the case and if they go down that route they aren't going to get into government and they're going to lose or even the existing government you need to tell them look this is what we want basically you need to go and talk to these people in charge basically you need to stop just sitting there with your car keys dangling uselessly in your hand and you need to do something about it before it's too late can you believe that i'm sitting in my you know modern classic 1989 bmw 325i se e30 model this car i've basically now got around five weeks in which i can drive it now that's it because i live in the area where ulez will expand to i've only got five weeks left to drive this for free until every time i take it out of my car park i will have to pay 12 pound 50 and i will because they put cameras on my road already that is happening and the reality is that you know if i have to pay it's like somebody i met yesterday an event at a car event a fantastic car event where a lot of london-based people were there a lot of people that were going to be affected by ulez were there they were all having a great day out they were all enjoying it a lot of discussion about ulez many people are concerned about it a lot of those people had modern classics and the reality is that it, like somebody said to me there said look if it's going to be a situation where i'm going to have to pay 12 pound 50 to drive this car i never drive my car into central london but if i'm going to have to pay 12 pound 50 then i'm going to get 
my money's worth out of it. I'm going to drive it everywhere. And I feel the same. If I have to pay £12.50, I'm going to drive it everywhere. I drive into the most congested, worst parts of London because, heck, I've paid for uh, the right to do that. So I'm going to do it. And that's what I think a lot of people are going to think about that. So again, it's this kind of self-defeating uh, objective of, of this scenario that we're looking at. Um, you know, and the reality is that following on from that with paper mile and everything else that's coming soon, it's going to be a case that, well, I won't be able to afford to drive this at all, you know, and that is absolutely ridiculous. So, you know, like I've said before, we need to draw the line here. We need to tell everybody that this has to stop here. The Euler's expansion has to stop and we have to, we absolutely must stop and cancel any discussion of paper mile because otherwise it's going to be upon us before we know it and in the meantime i'm going to drive the wheels off this thing while i still have time because soon it's just ridiculous Brown hope you enjoyed that video if you did please please hit the like button and share this video as well if you can and while you're at it check out these guys who also sponsor my content i am deeply grateful to them because it helps me to buy new equipment Put fuel in the cars, and yes, buy a cup of coffee. You can do the same, just go here, or right here on YouTube. Just hit these three little dots down here and click on thanks. Make sure you're signed in first. My content is free, but this is how you can help me keep it that way. I may even send you a gift. Oh, by the way, watch this next.